Hello. In this video, we are going to investigate how the energy of an ethane or substituted ethane molecule changes as we vary the torsion angle, the dihedral angle, from atoms 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. This corresponds to a rotation around the carbon-carbon single bond between atoms 2 and 3, as shown in the figure. Figure 1 shows the computed relative energies of an unsubstituted assay molecule as we vary the dihedral angle from 0 to 360 degrees. We notice that there are three relative maxima pointed out with the blue arrow at 0, 120, and 240 degrees for the dihedral angle. These maxima correspond to the situation where we have the eclipse conformation of ethane, where if we look down the carbon-carbon single bond, we notice that it appears that the three hydrogen atoms that are nearest to us block out or eclipse the three that are attached to the back carbon atom. We also notice that there are three minima pointed out by the red arrows at 60, 180, and 300 degrees for the dihedral angle. This corresponds to the so-called staggered conformation, where the hydrogens attached to the back carbon seem to be exactly bisecting the angles formed by the hydrogens attached to the front carbon. The distance in energy between the minima and the maxima is approximately 2.7 kcal per mole, and this difference in energy is usually attributed to steric hindrance and electrostatic repulsion of the front hydrogen atoms with the back hydrogen atoms. If we mono-substitute the ethane with a single halogen, we get a very, very similar picture, except that the barriers get slightly larger from 2.7 kcal per mole to almost 3.5 kcal per mole. As the halogen gets larger, the rotational barrier gets slightly larger. But even if we look carefully at figure two, we notice that the curves for chlorine and bromine are so close together, they're almost impossible to distinguish. We notice that the maxima for the mono-substituted uh, fluoroethane is, following the uh, yellow line here, is roughly 3.2 kcal per mole. But it occurs in exactly the same position as we had for the unsubstituted ethane. Here is the conformer of fluoroethane that corresponds to the maxima in energy. Again, we have an eclipse conformation. We notice in figure two that whether 
uh, unsubstituted or monosubstituted with a halogen, that the minima occur in exactly the same place. And these are pointed out with the red arrows in the figure. Here we see the confirmation corresponding to the energy minima, the staggered confirmation of fluoroethane. For the sake of completeness, here is the optimized structure for the energy maximum for chloroethane, the eclipse conformation. Here is the energy minimum for chloroethane, the staggered conformation. This is the geometry optimized structure. Here is the energy maximum for bromoethane, the eclipsed confirmation. And the energy minimum for bromoethane, which of course is going to be the staggered confirmation. Now we want to look at the case of the 1,2-dihalogenated substituted ethanes and see how the energy of the molecule uh, changes as we vary the torsion dihedral angle. And we notice in this particular figure 3 that it, for the case of the 1,2-dichloro and the 1,2-dibromo, there are still three energy minima, but they are not all equal as they were in the case of the unsubstituted ethane or the monosubstituted ethane. The global minimum for the 1,2-dichloro and 1,2-dibromo ethanes occurs when we have a dihedral angle of 180 degrees, as shown with the red arrow in figure three. Not surprisingly, this corresponds to a staggered conformation where the two chlorine atoms uh, are completely opposite to each other, thereby minimizing both steric hindrance and electrostatic repulsion. There are two more relative minima corresponding to dihedral angles of 60 degrees or 240 degrees, but these are not as low as for the um, global minimum at 180 degrees. These correspond to what we call a Gauss conformation. Here we see the front and back chlorine atoms, the one and two substituted uh, species, being 60 degrees from each other. So it bears some resemblance to a staggered conformation, but the two chlorines are not completely uh, opposite to each other in this conformation. For the 1,2-dichloro and 1,2-dibromo, we have uh, one global maximum, which occurs at a dihedral angle of 0 and 360 degrees. This is going to correspond to a eclipse conformation where the chlorine atoms eclipse each other.
This confirmation is often referred to as the fully eclipse because the two substituents eclipse each other. The other relative maxima occurs uh, when we have a dihedral angle of 120 or 240 degrees, and this is an and eclipsed confirmation, but not the fully eclipsed. In this case, chlorine and hydrogen eclipse each other. In this confirmation, the front chlorine eclipses a hydrogen atom behind it, and a front hydrogen eclipses a chlorine atom behind it. So this is not the global maximum, but a relative maximum for the 1,2-dichloro and 1,2-dibromoethane. While the 1,2-dichloro and 1,2-dibromoethanes have equivalent relative maxima and minimum, varying only very slightly in the uh, height of the barrier, we see that we get a slightly different picture for the 1,2-difluoroethane. And we see that it has two global minima, now at 60 and 240 degrees, and the relative minimum at 180 degrees. So this is completely reversed from the case for the 1,2-dichloro and 1,2-dibromoethane. Here is the staggered confirmation, a dihedral angle of 180 degrees, which is now a relative minimum, but not the global minimum for the 1,2-difluoroethane. And here we point out this particular position on the graph, showing it with a red arrow. Similar to the 1,2-dichloro and 1,2-dibromo, we have relative maximum at 120 and 240 degrees. This is a partially eclipsed confirmation. In this partially eclipsed confirmation of 1,2-difluoroethane, we see that the front fluorine atom eclipses a hydrogen behind it, whereas a front hydrogen to the lower right eclipses the fluorine atom behind it. Here we see the global minima shown with green arrows around 60 and 300 degrees for the dihedral angle. And we had mentioned before that these particular confirmations are referred to as the gauche confirmation. Here is the optimized structure for the gauche confirmation of 1,2-difluoroethane, which for this particular molecule turns out to be the global minimum in energy. In a very similar manner to the 1,2-dichloro and 1,2-dibromoethanes, for 1,2-difluoro, there is a single uh, global maximum, which occurs at a dihedral angle of zero degrees, which corresponds to the fully eclipsed conformation of the molecule. Here is the geometry optimized structure for the fully eclipsed conformation of 1,2-difluoroethane, which is the global maximum for the molecule.
we would like to explain why 1,2-difluorethane has a minimum in the GOJ conformation, whereas 1,2-dichloro and 1,2-dibromoethane have their minimum in the staggered conformation. If we refer to ordinary ethane, we would expect the minimum to be in the fully staggered conformation because that minimizes steric hindrance and electrostatic repulsion. Let's look at the relevant molecular orbitals involved in the GOES conformation. First, we're looking at a sigma bonding orbital uh, shown in blue and the individual atomic orbitals, which are a 1s orbital on hydrogen and a 2s orbital on carbon are shown as open red circles. They are bonding orbitals, so they have exactly the same phase. Next, we show the pi antibonding orbital between carbon and fluorine. And because it's an antibonding orbital, we notice that they have opposite phase relationships for the relevant lobes. In this molecule, we have the transfer of electron density from the filled sigma orbital on the right-hand side into the empty pi antibonding orbital on the left. And since we have overlap of empty circles, which are the same phase, this is in effect a net bonding interaction between a sigma bonding and a pi antibonding orbital. And it is this transfer of electron density that ultimately stabilizes the GOES conformation of 1,2-difluoroethane uh, relative to the other conformations and makes this the global minimum for energy, unlike the case where uh, for 1,2-dichloro and 1,2-dibromo, where there isn't sufficient uh, transfer of electron density to uh, overcome the uh, steric hindrance of the two substituents. Here in figure five is a summary of the conformational energies for all three of the 1,2 dihalogenated ethanes, uh, showing the relative maximum minimum. And we notice that relative to the ethane or the mono substituted ones, that now the uh, rotational barriers are larger than uh, two and a half or three kcals per mole, but now as large as 10 kcals per mole. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, have a good one.